Good morning, everybody. How y'all doing? Happy Wednesday. And we're here. We are finally here. Training camp has begun. Players have reported. And today, actually, probably by the time you watch this video, it will be the case that they're going to start on-field work, meaning that soon we're going to have concrete, clear things to talk about with the Seahawks. No more specul... Well, I shouldn't say that. There's going to be speculation always, but um, we're going to have concrete things to go into. And that's pretty exciting. Um, training camp means that preseason's almost here. Preseason almost being here means that the season's almost here. And look, I don't have big expectations for this year. I don't think most people do. But regardless, this is still a very interesting time. And the things that we see this year are going to be hugely influential on whether or not this team has a bright future in 2023 and beyond, even if this year isn't good. So it's going to be interesting to watch regardless. So yesterday, players reported to training camp. Probably the biggest headline from yesterday was the fact that DK Metcalf did report. I uh, got the tweet from Jeremy Fowler up on screen. Uh, Metcalf skipped minicamp in June, but um, he did show up for this. Now, we don't know if he's going to practice. I doubt he will. And while this is a positive development, it should be noted that missing training camp, according to the new CBA, incurs stiff and non-waivable fines on players. So... In a way, you could say that Metcalf almost had to show up to training camp. He, he can't do anything else or else he's going to lose money that will not be hugely significant once he gets his new contract, but is hugely significant to him now. And even, even with the new contract, you don't want to lose money if you don't have to. So him showing up is not necessarily an indication that everything's completely cool. I'm sure he still wants that new deal. But as many people have said, the Seahawks like to wait until training camp to do their big extensions sometimes. So at the end of the day, I guess this is just how they operate. I still don't know what benefit they take from it, but it's not like it's a big problem as long as they end up getting the deal done anyway. So it doesn't matter all that much. It just means we have more stuff to talk about during the offseason, I guess. So Metcalf did show up. And I would assume that he's not going to do much of anything. He's going to do one of those hold-ins that uh, Jamal did last year where he'll show up, but he's not going to put his body at risk without long-term financial security. So that's probably how this is going to go. Uh, there were a few other interesting things from uh, the training camp roundup yesterday. Maybe the second most interesting was a wave of a player. Uh, we have waved a player. No word yet on if he waved back or not, but regardless, linebacker Ben Burker has been waved. Um, he failed his physical. He suffered an injury almost 12 months ago. It's it's coming up on 12 months now. So doesn't look like he was able to recover from that. Doesn't look like he was able to fully bounce back from that. So he isn't currently off the team. If nobody picks him up in the next, I think, day or two, he goes back to our team, but goes to the injured reserve, which I don't know if that keeps him out the whole year or just the first part of the year. I'm pretty sure he could come back later, but for the moment, he's not on the team. And even if he does come back, we know we're not going to have him for at least the start of the season. Now, Ben Burkirvin, I never really had much optimism for him being anything more than what he was, which is a special teamer. He's a good special teamer. But we played all of last year without him. Even with the loss of Bobby Wagner, I don't believe that Burke Irvin is going to play a role in this defense going forward. And if he does, it's probably a bad thing because he's just too limited as a player. He's small, and in a 3-4 defense, that's even a bigger problem than it would have been in the 4-3. So I will say that Ben Burke Irvin played pretty well in the preseason at times at linebacker. And I do feel bad for him that he can't get past this injury, but I don't think it's hugely significant. Although I will say our interior linebacker depth is not exactly a strong suit of the team. So there was a universe where Burke Irvin ended up be being called on to play inside linebacker if a couple guys got hurt. But um, I, I think that even in the case where Burke Irvin was okay, you may have seen like Nick Ballore 
get on the field as a linebacker. Uh, Joel E.A. Buniwe ends up on the field possibly if somebody goes down. So I think all those things are a little more likely. So Ben Burkirvan getting waived. I mean, it's it's a tragic in its own way, but um, I wasn't exactly depending on him for anything big. The PUP list, which is um, where teams put players who are not yet physically able to perform, um, but can activate them at pretty much any time before the season starts. Um, I, I, I'm i not going to go into all the finer points of the PUP list right now, but suffice to say it's a list of players that are currently not physically able to go. Uh, the only big one is Trey Brown, which we expected because he suffered a massive injury, like, what, nine months ago. Uh, we also had John Radigan, which wouldn't be a big deal if not for the fact that Ben Burkirvan has been waived, so that actually kind of matters now. Tyreek Smith, which I didn't see coming, and Liam Ryan, and I don't even really know who that is. <laughs> so, it's a pretty clean PUP list. Trey Brown is the only one that kind of hurts. And if we go into the season without Trey Brown week one, then I think we'll be able to put together enough cornerbacks to be fine. But Radigan was a special teamer at best. Tyreek Smith... I'm I'm not big on Tyreek Smith. As of right now, I look at this roster, I see him as being like, at best, the fourth out, oh, well, outside linebacker, maybe fifth. We, we know he's going to be behind uh, Taylor and Mafe and Nwosu at the very least, and probably Alton Robinson as well. So I, I didn't think there was a big role for him anyway. So if he misses part of the season, I don't think that's a big loss. And I don't even know what position Liam Ryan played because... I've been looking at so much stuff lately, I don't even really remember. But not a guy I would ever expect to make the roster. So um, notable from this list, absent, notable in the sense that they're apparently ready to go, would be Marquise Blair and Gabe Jackson, two guys who had surgery in the last year, and there were questions if they were going to be ready. They are, so that's a positive, especially for Blair, because this is a make-or-break year for his career. Um, Gabe Jackson, I'm kind of indifferent on, but better to have him than not have him. And that's basically the meat of the news we've been so far. We, um, already talked about the Carson retirement, which that kind of wraps into all this training camp stuff. But, uh, Metcalf's here, Ben Burkirvan's not here anymore, and we've got a couple of notable players who are currently not physically able to play. Excuse me. Um, as for training camp... There are definitely a few things that are going to be really interesting to watch. The obvious one is the quarterback battle. As of right now, it seems like Geno Smith is in the lead. I'm getting the sense that Geno Smith is probably going to um, at least have pole position when the preseason starts, but I do believe that he could lose it. Um, Madden ranked him behind Jacob Eason for a reason. Now, um, I mean, that's a joke. To be clear, Madden is a complete joke, and... I don't take their player rating seriously, and nobody else should. Um, Madden in general doesn't deserve to be taken seriously, but um, there's nothing going on with Geno Smith that guarantees his uh, job security against uh, even somebody like a Drew Locke. But that training camp battle and eventual preseason battle is going to be one of the most compelling stories. Um, there are a couple others, though, like um, I would say the right tackle battle is going to be interesting as insofar as that there is a battle. I think there will be between Lucas and um, um, Kerhan. And I would also say the cornerback battle to see who starts. And maybe even a little bit at center. Uh, I'm sorry, not center, guard. I'm sorry, my bad. So you've got the right tackle battle with Abe Lucas and Kerhan. Now, Abe Lucas was a top 100 pick. He was considered to be a steal where we got him, by the way. A lot of people thought he was going to be a top 50 pick. Instead, he barely goes in the top, what was it, top 75. So he's he's not a blue chipper, but he does have some draft pedigree, whereas Jay Curhan was a UDFA. But Curhan has experience, and he played decently last year. Um, it's, it's possible that Curhan wins that battle. I don't see it happening. I don't really want him to. I like Curhan. Props to him for doing what he did last year. I have nothing but respect for it. But I think we need to get Lucas as many reps as he can, as many reps as he can get. So I'm hoping that Lucas wins that. But it is worth watching. Kerhan has experience. Kerhan proved that he belongs in the NFL last year. And Abraham Lucas, 
I think some of the concerns about him are overstated, but he did play in a offense that is pretty radically different from what he's going to be playing in in the NFL. So there could be a steep learning curve. And <laughs> excuse me. While it's understandable to let a player play through that, you also don't want him to get your quarterbacks killed because he's given up three sacks a game. So the right tackle battle, the cornerback battle, um, if Trey Brown is on the PUP, that narrows things down pretty significantly. If he can't practice and uh, he can't play, then I think you are probably looking at Kobe Bryant and um, um, shoot uh, Sidney Jones starting with... Um, probably Ugo Amadi initially starting at nickel. And then you're going to have guys like um, Burns and uh, Coleman backing them up. Obviously Coleman backing up the slot and Burns backing up the outside. But um, there is an opportunity for some surprises, some curveballs. Last year, Akella Witherspoon basically had a starting spot on lockdown and then he ended up not even, well, he got traded. But in effect, he didn't make the team because we were so unimpressed with him. So there's an opportunity for some unexpected developments there. And guard, guard. Um, we have Gabe Jackson versus Phil Haynes and maybe Damian Lewis. It's kind of a three-way battle for two spots. Um, I would like to see Damian Lewis and Phil Haynes because I don't think Gabe Jackson has any chance of being here next year. But Gabe Jackson is a veteran with experience. He was here last year and played almost every game. So maybe the team decides they want somebody they feel like they can rely on more. And Phil Haynes has to um, outrun his injury history past as well if he wants a real shot at this. So those are going to be, I think, the most interesting training camp battles. Hopefully we can get an idea of how those things play out. Um, the, the other thing that I'm keeping an eye on for training camp is some early indication of what we can expect from some of these rookies. And when I say some of them, what I mean is I know Cross is going to play. He's going to start day one and he's going to play pretty much every snap until he gets hurt. Or maybe he plays so bad they can't keep him out there, I guess. Um, I think Lucas is probably in the same boat, although I'm not sure. I know Kenneth Walker is going to play a role as a backup running back at the start, if not the starter. Um, I'm, I'm really confident that Kobe Bryant's going to either start or play a significant role for the defense. But I'm specifically looking at guys like uh, Boye Mafe, who I'm a big fan of. I really like him. But even during the pre-draft process when I was talking about him, I did look at him as a little bit of a project. I looked at him as a little bit of a work in progress where you would draft him and he wouldn't do a ton that first year. And then by the second year, hopefully, he's developed to the point where he's ready to play in the NFL. Um not somebody who had a ton of college experience, so I want to see what he can do in training camp to start to get an idea of whether or not we can actually expect something from him this year. And it's not a big deal if he can't go as long as he's ready to go next year, but um, is this a guy who's going to be on the shelf until maybe week 10 or 11, or is he a guy who's going to be in the rotation from week one and making a weekly contribution to the team? That, I don't know. Um, he, he's the main one. Um, I guess you could also say Tariq Woolen, although I've already kind of in my head redshirted Woolen for a year at least because I, I just can't imagine how he could possibly be ready to play in the NFL at cornerback, but um, it's worth watching. Stranger things have happened. Richard Sherman became a starter in like week seven, his rookie year, which people didn't expect, and immediately he was an effective player and by year two, he was a elite cornerback. So it happens. And I would also talk about maybe Bo uh, Melton and Derek Young. I don't know how many opportunities they're going to get, but the bottom end of the receiver depth chart for this team should be a bit of a bloodbath. There are a lot of intriguing guys, guys who have been here for a little bit, like Penny Hart and Aaron Fuller and uh, maybe Cade Young as well versus you have guys who just got here like Derek Young and Bo Melton. Not all of them are going to make the team. Um, Freddie Swain might even get involved in that battle as well. His job may be on the line. I want to see how the bottom end of the receiver de uh, depth chart shakes out. And that's pretty much all I'm interest, uh, all the most interesting stuff. I'm interested in everything, but to me, those are the interesting storylines. Let me know what you're looking out for in... Um, training camp this year and um, by the time you see this video we should start getting some updates on it 
See you guys later. Go Hawks. And uh, see you all tonight on Twitch.